Hey, this is Warren Redlick. I got really motivated this morning when I read an article in Fortune magazine about Tesla. And I've been thinking about making a video like this for a while, and I'm on it now. I wanted to make a video about what Wall Street gets wrong about Tesla, and this article in Fortune magazine is the perfect example of how Wall Street completely fails to get Tesla. I want to talk to you about 10 things. I'm going to go through the article bit by bit. But there's 10 things that I'm going to cover here that you're going to see. First, Wall Street ignores what Tesla says in quarterly calls. The investor calls. Every quarter, Tesla has a call. They talk about what they're doing. They talk about their business model. And this article and so many other Wall Streeters just completely ignore what Elon Musk and Zach Kirkhorn and others at Tesla say. They ignore the growth model. They ignore software. They ignore energy. They ignore so much more. Number two, they ignore robotaxi. The future is robotaxi. This is going to be huge. And it completely is absent. It is completely absent from this article. No analysis. No one talks about the robotaxi business model from Wall Street. They just completely miss it. They ignore the gigafactories that are currently being built. They talk about Tesla as if Tesla is just the factory in Fremont. They don't seem to be aware that Tesla already has a new factory in Shanghai with an additional line already almost ready to go. They ignore Berlin. They ignore Austin. They don't talk about potential future gigafactories. Just completely ignore it. And along with that, they ignore manufacturing improvements. They don't see that Tesla is radically improving their manufacturing approach. The cost of making vehicles is going down fast. The quality of the vehicles is going up fast. It's completely different from a traditional automaker, and they totally do not see it. They ignore total cost of ownership. They treat Tesla like they look at the, just the list price. Of the, they look at just the MSRP of the vehicle, and they don't look at the total cost of ownership that we know, okay, a Tesla Model 3 costs more than a standard Toyota Camry. But over five years, a Tesla Model 3 costs less than a Toyota Camry. It costs less than a BMW because you're spending less money on fuel or electricity. You're not paying for oil changes. You're not paying for an oil filter. And there's all these parts. There's all this maintenance that doesn't need to be done. And the cost of energy is less. And the time, you don't have to go waste time getting an oil change. You don't have to stand there looking like an idiot in the gas station. When you can charge in your garage, there's so many advantages that are just completely ignored. They ignore the software side of Tesla. Just completely ignore it. The over-the-air updates, the ability to provide services by the vehicle. I personally don't think software is that big a chunk of Tesla's business because I think RoboTaxi is huge. But if you're just looking at the car business itself, that software component is big. And just the value of full self-driving and Tesla is charging $8,000 and 50% of buyers are buying the FSD option. That's $8,000 additional profit on the car and they just miss it. And if that gets better and it goes up in price and more people adopt it, that's even more revenue and even more profit for Tesla. It's just completely not considered in this article or any standard Wall Street analysis. They minimize Tesla energy. Now, I personally think robotaxi is the dominant factor, but if you're looking only at cars, then Tesla's energy market is huge. Even in the investor, that's why I'm saying they ignore the, the quarterly calls. Even in the quarterly call, Elon said, and Zach Kirkhorn, you know, it's one thing Elon says something, and you're like, oh, well, it's just Elon. Well, Zach Kirkhorn backs almost everything Elon says in these investor calls lately. Tesla energy, energy is a bigger market than the car market. If Tesla grows to dominate, to, if Tesla takes a significant market share of the energy market, that's huge. That's huge. It's monstrous. And they completely ignore it. They give it like 15%, you know, kind of as a bundle of energy and software and services. No, no, you're just missing it. You don't even put any analysis into it. They limit market potential. In this particular article, they compare them to the luxury car market, ignoring the greater car market. A lot of times I'll see analysis this, where they'll say, oh, they're, they're going to have this market share of the EV market. There is no EV market and other car market. 
It's all the same market. Teslas are competing with gasoline cars, period. And electric vehicles are going to dominate. Gas-powered vehicles are going bye-bye. They're going bye-bye. They're done. They're gone. Just they completely missed that. And they miss, it's not just the, the EVs. Tesla Semi isn't part of the regular car market. It's the, it's the, the tractor trailer market. It's a totally different market. They miss energy. When they look at that, they're, they're, they're so cabined into, this is a car maker, this is a car maker, this is a car maker. Let's compare it to car makers. Tesla is so much more than that. And this typical Wall Street analysis completely misses it. They assume competition. They're just consistently determined to say, oh, there's competition coming. There's competition coming. These other car companies aren't going to sit still. No, they're done. They're f***ed. They're done. It's over. These companies cannot compete with Tesla. They can't. They don't innovate the same way. If you look at Sandy Monroe, they made 13 design changes in a fairly short span of time. He couldn't get Ford to make one design change in a year. They are radically improving their vehicles, and other car companies simply aren't agile enough to compete with Tesla. It's over. They're done. Maybe there'll be some other competitor. Maybe it's Rivian. Maybe it's Comma.ai. Maybe Apple will suddenly start making cars. Who knows? Maybe there's some competition coming from somewhere. But it ain't coming from Ford, GM, BMW, Volkswagen not happening. Toyota, it's not happening. They simply aren't prepared. They're going to be wiped out. They're going to go bankrupt. They all have too much debt. Their markets are going to collapse and they won't be able to afford to pay their debt and they're all going to go bankrupt. They're done. Stick a fork in them. It's over. Tesla is already winning and they're just completely missing this revolutionary change. Tesla is not just changing the auto industry. Robo taxi will change the entire transportation industry. It's going to change how we live our lives. It's going to change everything from how we get where we're going to go to real estate because no one's going to build a parking garage anymore and you won't need a garage in your house and you won't need a driveway anymore. It's just going to radically change everything and Wall Streeters just can't see it. Total blindness. And just like markets, they limit their analysis to the auto industry. They ignore the other industries in which Tesla competes. So now let's go through the Fortune article. It starts with the headline. Tesla can never justify its current stock price by simply making cars. No <laughs> Sherlock. Tesla does not justify its valuation or its business by simply making cars. We already know that. If you weren't a f***ing moron, you would know that Tesla has a completely different business model than what you're talking about. They say Tesla would need to conquer nearly a third of the entire global luxury car market, a highly improbable feat. Well, they're not trying to conquer the global luxury car market. They're trying to make, they're trying to conquer the entire car market and not conquer, but just make a lot of cars. And they're trying to do so much more than that. They're trying to change the way transportation is done. You just completely don't get what Tesla is about. But that's the headline. Let's get into the specifics of the article. I love this moment where they just casually dismiss Tesla as the glamour model in the ultra competitive industry, a slow growth business of building and selling cars. This is misogynistic. This is a slam on women. If you, if you notice this, the glamour model, this isn't it like pretty girls aren't that smart. It's just so stupid. It, there's a saying here in Florida, it's not the heat, it's the humidity. A friend of mine modified it. It's not the heat. It's the stupidity. The outrageous f***ing stupidity. Refer to it as the mainly slow growth business of building and selling cars. I've said this before multiple times. I'll say it again. They're not in the business of building and selling cars. And business of building and selling cars is a slow growth business for car companies that don't make newer and better cars. That don't radically improve the type of vehicle that they're making. Tesla has radically improved what the car is, and they're radically improving it still. They're making their vehicles better and better and better. That is radical change. It is not part of a slow growth business. There's a good point here. Every once in a while, there's something useful in here. That article goes through what's the valuation Tesla must achieve in 2030 to justify the share price that people are paying now. But that's not bad. And then it goes, but their, their approach just keeps missing it. You see, the answer depends largely on how many electric vehicles it needs to sell going forward. 
Okay, no, it doesn't. It doesn't just depend on the sales of electric vehicles. It depends on other things. And then it says whether achieving those volumes is plausible considering that at least half a dozen rivals have big plans for their own EVs. No, they don't. They have small plans for their own EVs. Cadillac has Ultium, which is some fictional battery technology that, that they're going to start selling in 2024. Come on, man. That's nowhere. Volkswagen maybe, maybe has something. Maybe. But they've got to supply batteries. They've got to improve their technology. They have to have a plan for how they're going to make things better. Nobody has a robo-taxi model. Where is this EV competition that these people are imagining? Where are they? Jaguar I-Pace sucks. Audi e-tron sucks. Porsche Taycan. Yeah, it's a pretty good sports car, but it's not a Tesla Model S and it costs twice as much. There's no competition. The only competition Tesla faces is their ability to produce enough cars. Um, they sell every car they make. They sell every f***ing car they make. The challenge is to make more of them. The challenge is to make more batteries. This article doesn't mention f***ing batteries once, and that's the, the biggest challenge Tesla faces. These people are morons. They don't get it. Okay, this one quote might be my favorite thing in the entire article. They, given the size and projected growth of the industry, keep in mind they're cabining in the industry, Tesla can't get there, and this is it. It would have to put an impossibly large number of customers behind the wheel. You're totally missing RoboTaxi. There isn't going to be a f***ing wheel. You morons. The business model is to make a vehicle that doesn't need a steering wheel. The car will drive itself. How do you not see this? It, it's unbelievable. But even in the framework that they're talking about, yes, it's not an impossibly large number of customers. It's not. They're, down the, further in the article, they're going to say they would need to produce 3.5 million EVs. That's not impossibly large. Just on Cybertruck alone, they should be able to sell a million vehicles. Ford F-150 sells a million vehicles a year. That's just one. That's just one vehicle. They've got the Model Y that's going to produce a huge volume. They've got the Model 3 that's already a bestseller. What are you talking about? So we're going to get, go forward in this, but I just love this. This addiction to behind the wheel is a total ignorance of the fact that there's going to be no wheel. They don't get Tesla. They just don't get it. So this is another example of sort of standard Wall Street analysis. I think this is a reasonable premise it starts with. Let's assume you'd want a 7% annual return on Tesla. If you're investing in stocks. If you're a conservative investor, you want to see that kind of return on your stock. And then they project what Tesla would have to achieve to achieve that 7% annual return. They say it would need to double its valuation in 10 years to around $834 billion by mid-2030. Okay. Well, that's actually not that hard if you're a growth company and you're doing the things that Tesla's doing. If you look at my models and check up here, um, I made a video where I went through three different models of Tesla and how much money they're going to make. They're easily going to achieve an $834 billion market cap by 2030. I think they're going to achieve a $2 trillion or more market cap by 2030, and it could be a lot more. But if you ignore Tesla's potential, you're just completely missing the story. I am projecting that Tesla reaches that $834 billion market cap by 2025, not 2030. And it could be even higher, faster, as soon as RoboTaxi takes off. But I like the idea that they're approaching it a certain way. This is what they have to achieve. And what you're going to see is Tesla's going to knock this out of the ballpark. They're going to be worth this. This article actually shows that Tesla is undervalued, not overvalued at its current share price. This is another example further down the article where they completely miss what Tesla is doing. They say it's unlikely that any big automaker can remain a runaway growth machine after decades in the business. Well, first of all, has Tesla really been in the business for decades? I think the company started in 2008. The Model S appeared in 2012. They really didn't become a volume car maker until a few years ago. So, is it fair to compare Tesla to a big automaker that has been in the, in the business for decades? Maybe they're in their second decade. 
you know, certainly you can say they're in their second decade, but that's not in the business for decades. If you include Roadster, okay, they're in their third decade, but Roadster was a hobby car. It's only when the Model S came out that they started to become something of a more serious car maker. But really, it's the Model 3, which was around 2016 or 2017, that really became the vehicle, that became the first to push them towards becoming a big automaker. But really, they've only been in business for a few years as a significant automaker. and 2030, it still won't be the second decade. So where are you coming from? Yes, and, and it's true that other big automakers can't be runaway growth machines because they don't have a growth model. They're not radically improving their products. They're not doing the same things that Tesla is doing. They're not radically changing the industry. They just simply don't have it. They don't have software businesses. They don't make their own batteries and they're not developing new battery technology. They're not in the energy sector, which is also not normally a runaway growth business, but it is if, it is if you are a disruptor and they're completely ignoring Tesla's role as a disruptor of industries, just like SpaceX is a disruptor in the space launch industry and the space industry. Just like the Boring Company is going to be a disruptor in the tunneling industry, Tesla is a disruptor in the car industry and in the transportation sector, in the energy industry and more. So if you don't see that Tesla is a disruptor, you're just missing it. Okay, so this one, I, I, this one just gets to me. You have to compare where Tesla needs to go alongside the status of its present and future rivals. Tesla has no present rivals. None. There are no rivals. Tesla sells every car they make. They're not competing with anyone else. You don't need to compare them to anyone else presently because no one is competing with them. And what future rivals? I, I don't see them. Maybe Rivian's going to make some trucks. Maybe, just maybe, Nikola is going to make some semis. Maybe Volkswagen is going to somehow survive the collapse of its uh, internal combustion engine business and its $200 billion debt load and survive to make EVs that are vaguely competitive with Tesla. They're not a rival. And then look at their, oh, Tesla lost money in 2019 and they only have $800 billion in free cash flow. Okay, where was Amazon 10 years ago? I bought Amazon stock in 2013. I'm not saying I did a sophisticated analysis. I just realized, wow, I'm really impressed with Amazon Prime. I'm addicted to it. Other people are going to be like this. Amazon wasn't, I don't think Amazon's ever made a lot of money. Their profit, they've never focused on making a profit. They've focused on growing the business. And look at where Amazon is today. I've made a ridiculous amount of money on my Amazon stock. My biggest mistake was not buying more when I bought it and you know, and selling some along the way to take profits. Those are my biggest mistakes with Amazon. Fortunately, I invested those profits in Tesla, which went up even more than Amazon did in, since the, I sold in 2018. So, hey, all right. But this nonsense, how this kind of analysis misses the Amazons. Am, I'm up more, more than 10x on Amazon from 2013. More than 10x. If you applied this nonsense type of analysis that Wall Street does, to Amazon in 2013, you wouldn't have bought the stock and you wouldn't have 10 x your holdings. They don't get it. They just don't get it. Okay, so there's always that moment when they sort of vaguely recognize something different about Tesla. Oh, but Tesla isn't just a car company. It gets revenues from energy generation and storage and services. We'll assume Tesla generates 85% of its sales and profits from cars in the future. Where'd you get that assumption from? You just make it up, pull it out of your ass? What the hell is that? If you listen to the last quarterly call, Elon and Zach Kirkhorn both said that the energy market is bigger, bigger than the car market. The potential for Tesla energy is huge. Every roof needs, at some point, every roof needs to be replaced. And you're, an, you're an idiot if you don't replace your roof with a Tesla solar roof. It's going to cost a little bit more, and it's going to make up that money in a very short time by saving you so much money on energy. Tesla solar is huge. Tesla energy storage is huge. It's already making a huge impact. And all of these things are getting better and better and better. And their market share will grow and grow and grow. And you get to a certain point, and it's just as much as you can make, you can sell. They're not 
limited by market size. They're limited by how much they can make. That's it. It's all about how many batteries they can make, how many solar panels they can make, how many solar roof tiles they can make, how many installers they can get in place. These are the constraints on Tesla, not competition. And this fantasy that it's 15%. Now, listen, I actually think on my models, Tesla energy is small, but car manufacturing is also small. Robotaxi is the real revenue model and profit model for Tesla. But if you go with, if you ignore Robotaxi, then Tesla energy is going to be huge compared to cars. 50-50 maybe, maybe bigger. I don't look at it that way because I look at Robotaxi as the real deal. But if you're going to ignore Robotaxi, there you go. Another standard analytical tool that is appropriate that Wall Street analysts use is margin. And they compare Tesla to the world's major automakers. And the, the top automakers in terms of margin are BMW and Toyota with margins in the mid 8% range. So we'll act like a Tesla believer, they say, and predict it will achieve a margin of net income to sales of 9%. Okay, but they're not just an automaker. So if you keep assuming they're like other automakers, you keep missing the story. You're just missing it. Tesla's margins include software. BMW doesn't sell software. Toyota doesn't sell software. There's no meaningful software in their cars. You're ignoring the, the potential margins in energy. And you're ignoring even in just the traditional car maker thing, the traditional car maker model. Tesla is radically reducing the cost of producing vehicles. The, the model, the, the, the basic model of the vehicle, the, the, the structure, everything, they're making it cheaper to produce. There are fewer parts. They're easier to make. They're making them in higher volume. They don't have 20 different engines. They have a few, a few motors, electric motors. They make them in high volume. They're able to achieve huge economies of scale. They're finding ways to make things more efficiently. They're making radical, radical improvements at a much faster pace. I'm not saying BMW doesn't improve their cars. I'm not saying Toyota doesn't improve their cars. They just don't do it at the same pace. They don't have this iterative model that Tesla has that Wall Street simply can't see. They, they, they miss it. They just don't get it. Tesla's margins are radically higher because of things like the full self-driving option. But if somebody buys full self-driving at a current price of $8,000, it's going to go up to ten, dollars then $20,000 and more. That, that's bonus margin on the vehicle. You spent $25,000 making the vehicle. You were going to sell it for $35,000, but poof, you get an extra $8,000 in revenue for FSD. And then you get other sources of revenue along the way. Somebody decides to download an, update, an upgrade. Somebody decides to download some software to play on the Tesla computer. All these things are there as additional margin that you're just completely ignoring. So now we get into napkin math. They say that the math, their math puts Tesla 2030 revenues at $204 billion. They got 3.5 million EVs and they got $60,000 or so per vehicle. And I, I think that gets them somewhere to their $204 billion mark. I've got 30 million vehicles, 30 million vehicles in 2030 at $30,000 a vehicle. And I get $900 billion in revenue. So. You know, somehow we're getting very different numbers here, and that doesn't include Tesla Energy, and that doesn't include robo-taxi revenue. We got a very different set of numbers here. They say to reach $204 billion, sales would need to jump 23% a year. Elon has been very clear that their goal is 50% a year growth, and let's be clear, we're going to see massive growth in 2021 and 2022. Massive growth. 2020 is going to be about 500,000 vehicles, which is basically the production capacity of the Fremont factory, which was partly shut down this year. So it was 500,000 between Fremont and the beginnings of Shanghai, the Shanghai Gigafactory. Well, 2021 Shanghai Gigafactory is going to be going full steam. It looks like the Tesla Model Y line is being added and is about ready to go. And we're going to see not just Model 3 production in China, but also Model Y production. Fremont is going to be up to full steam. Those two, Shanghai and Fremont together, may produce close to a million vehicles just in those two factories in 2021. And then you've got Berlin, which is going to have its Model Y factory up and running sometime in 2021. I suspect it's going to be near full production for half a year, and that's going to add a quarter million vehicles. 
And then you've got Giga Texas. Somewhere in 2021, I expect Cybertrucks to start rolling off the line. That's going to be at least 100,000 vehicles. And Model Y may start rolling off the line because they want to use Model Y in Texas to supply the rest of the country. Fremont would be supplying the West Coast. Well, you might be... I think we're talking about 1.5 million vehicles in 2021, which is 300% growth or 200. It's way more than 23% growth. Okay. And then as Berlin scales up, as Texas scales up, as Shanghai scales up, as Fremont grows, you're going to see radical, radical increases in production. So they're talking about 3.5 million vehicles in 2030. And I think we're going to see 3.5 million vehicles by 2024. Um, the, the, the growth model for Tesla is much, much faster than these guys think. They're building factories cheap. They're keeping their capex down. They're able to build more factories because of that. They're improving what they're able to produce out of each factory. So they're doing so many things so radically different. The, the Berlin Model Y is going to have a completely different body design. The, the Cybertruck is a completely different manufacturing model that radically reduces capex and increases the ability to produce quickly because you don't have to do paint shop. And you don't have to do body stamping and pressing. Here's another one of those moments where they just don't get it. Tesla, according to Fortune, isn't a mass market purveyor like VW and Toyota. Its speciality, specialty is pricey models. The Tesla Model 3 was the number three best-selling car in California in the first three quarters of 2019. The Model 3 is a mass market car. The Model Y is a mass market SUV. The Cybertruck is going to be a mass market pickup truck. They are making mass market vehicles. If you judge Tesla by what they sold in the past, you're missing the story. Yes, Model S and Model X sell for a lot of money. Yes, the early rounds of Model 3 and Model Y were the higher version models. But over the long haul, Tesla is selling large volumes of Model 3, Model Y, Cybertruck, and there's more to come. This is where they get to the, it would take sales of 3.5 million EVs, each generating today's $58,000 to achieve the $204 billion in sales. Why do you think they're only going to have 3.5 million EVs in 2030? That's, that's completely missing Tesla's growth story. They're building three f***ing factories right now, you idiot. They're building factories. They have one main factory and they're adding factories like crazy. There's more coming. They're making their factories more productive. They're adding more models. This is an early stage company and they're growing fast. And that's just the cars. Still missing RoboTaxi. You're still missing energy. Again, they're cabining them into a limited market. Global revenues for the entire luxury car universe in 2019 amounted to roughly $650 billion, so Tesla would need to capture 31% of the total market. Look, if Tesla wanted to capture just the global luxury car market, the Model S is the best luxury car in the world. By far. The Model X is the best luxury SUV in the world. By far. They're getting better at making them. They're getting better at making them cheaper. If they just wanted to make luxury cars, they could do that, but they're not just a luxury car maker. Let's be real about this. Tesla is a mass market vehicle producer and so much more. So here's another brilliant moment where they talk about the entire global luxury market. They say Tesla would need to conquer an additional one quarter of the entire global luxury car market, 25 points of market share that the likes of Daimler and BMW would lose. And a shift even half that big seems impossible since these rivals will battle Tesla for every point by lowering prices, improving road performance, and adding features. Tesla has been taking market share from these companies, and they will continue to take market share from these companies because Tesla is making better cars. And Tesla is improving its cars at a more rapid rate. Look, Mercedes and, and BMW, Daimler and BMW will improve their cars they're not improving as quickly as Tesla. The only limit on Tesla's market share is the number of vehicles they can produce. The more they produce, the more they sell. A Tesla Model S, if you're just talking about luxury cars, a Tesla Model S 
at $75,000 is so much better than a Mercedes S-Class at $100,000. It's, it's a monster difference in the quality of what vehicle you're getting for the price. Faster acceleration, lower maintenance, easier to drive, safer. So many things going in Tesla's favor. Model 3 performance versus a BMW performance model, outrageous. The, B, the, the, the Tesla Model 3 is so much better of a performer. The Model Y versus a BMW or Mercedes SUV, clobbers them. Clobbers them. This idea that the other companies will lower prices, they don't have the business model that allows them to lower prices. Their business model is premised on increasing the number of sales and that somehow that economies of scale will work, but Tesla's cutting into their sales, so it's harder for them to lower prices. They're not making the radical improvements in how they make vehicles. They don't have, their bureaucratic nature makes it difficult or impossible for them to compete against Tesla in the way Tesla is competing. Improving road performance, they've been, look, these companies have been doing, they've been improving their vehicles for years. They haven't been lowering prices, but they've been improving their vehicles for years and they have been adding features, but it's not enough. They're not rivals, they can't compete. No one is taking market share from Tesla. Tesla is taking market share from others. They will conquer the luxury car market and they're gonna conquer a lot more than that. The article wraps up by talking about what Tesla fans argue. It says Tesla, according to us fans, could generate big sales and profits outside of selling Teslas by supplying batteries to other car makers or deploying new technologies. I have seen some people say that Tesla could sell batteries to other car makers. I've never said that. I don't think Tesla is going to sell batteries to other car makers. I think Tesla has an infinite demand, effectively infinite demand for the batteries it's making. It doesn't have room to sell batteries to other car makers. It needs the batteries it makes for the cars it makes and for grid storage and possibly for other applications. Why would they sell them to other car makers when they make more money using them in their own vehicles? That's complete nonsense. Or deploying new technologies. Yeah. Robotaxi, maybe you should think about it. Um, you know, maybe Robotaxi is going to be this monster revenue generator and monster profit generator, but you completely ignored it in this entire article. Total miss. They say their analysis assumes that the non-car 15% of Tesla's business also grows at a gigantic 20 plus rate in the future. Okay, well, yeah, maybe it's going to grow a lot more. You have no analysis. You don't have any analysis. You didn't analyze Tesla's other businesses. You just assumed it. Analysis would mean you actually looked at, gee, what's the energy sector like and how would Tesla compete in that sector? What's the potential for robo-taxi? You didn't analyze the other parts of Tesla's business. You assumed. You made this, you made this big whopping assumption. Wall Street makes these big whopping assumptions about Tesla and they ignore what Tesla is actually doing and what Tesla says it's going to do and what nuts like me say Tesla's going to do. So you can say we'll be victim of the zealots who sent its stock price on a moonshot and that Tesla could someday be a good deal, but only if it suffers a, as, as, a drop as jaw-dropping as its rise. I say, where were you when Amazon was so cheap in 2013 that I bought it for $260 a share? Where were you? Were you saying Amazon was overpriced? Did you not understand Amazon's business model. I'm not saying I understood the business model. I thought I saw something promising and I jumped on it. I didn't do a full analysis. All these people who analyzed Amazon made me a ton of money on Amazon and you're making me a ton of money on Tesla because you're not really analyzing, you're assuming and you got it wrong. So this is what Wall Street is getting wrong. Now before I finish this video, I just want to mention I've Introduce some merchandise down below the description if you want to buy t-shirts. I don't have my samples yet. I'll be showing them in later videos. I started with my Tesla minibus concept. I've got some more concepts coming. And of course, I've got my Elon Musk fan club t-shirts and other merchandise. And I've got other videos that are relevant. Particularly, I made a video explaining my models for Tesla's growth. I made that video before the stock split. You can see that video here where I break down what Tesla should be worth in 2030, and I use three different business models for it. And I think my models make a lot more sense than the models these Wall Street idiots are using. 
I've got a couple other videos for you to check out. Please subscribe, buy merch. Please check out my sponsor in the description. We would love to have channel sponsors.